Wow, good afternoon, and welcome to Musicians at Google, our, in, yeah, yeah, our inaugural show. This is so exciting. Thanks so much for coming out to share this. This is Holly Cook's first US tour. I'm going to go way out on a limb here and predict it will be far from her last. Holly is absolutely amazing. You will find that out in the next few minutes if you don't already know it. Her band is tight and smoking. Uh, this is going to be an incredible show. They're at the very beginning of their US tour. Uh, we saw them last night at the Paradise. Uh, it sounded like they've been on the road for weeks already. Just unbelievable. Please join me in welcoming Holly Cook and the band. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for having us. I'm going to start with a song that was my first single from my first album. It's called That Very Night. Thank you. 
a new album this year <coughs> so I'm going to play a couple of songs from that this song is called 99 it's about eating ice cream actually What 
Don't give me your smile, I adore Cause I can't touch you no more What a cold night alone And everywhere is dark And the old time is smooth Remember 1909 on the beach When we lay together, together Cause you're gonna leave me anyway What a pretty night alone well, My new days are sour And the old time confused Remember 1909 on the beach When we lay together, together It's called Looking for Real Love. It's also from my new album. Thank you very much for coming and sharing your lunch break with us. <laughs> thank you very much to Jonathan and, and the crew and for having us. And also thank you to the Next Level Band because they're really good. <laughs> so cheers. Yeah. This song's called Looking for Real Love. I've been Holly Cook from London.
level band you want to tell everybody your names we don't know you yet sure uh, my name is Jamie Hinkson I play keys for Holly Cook Jared Meeker I play guitar Patrick Bailey I play bass uh, Blake Coley I play drums so you guys are all from LA correct yes. and you've played together 
for a while now and other projects. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've played, uh, these two guys we've played off and on since uh, 96 or so. This guy over here on keyboards uh, just got out to LA through a, a mutual friend and uh, hit it off. And uh, here we are to instantly jump in on the adventure with Holly. Wow, so, outstanding. Yeah. How did you hook up? How did we? We, we? we worked together earlier this year when I played in, in California. And I've worked with okay. Patrick before last year when I played in California. And then, you know, they all just, they all know each other. And it was... It, it was Warren, uh, Warren at Sierra Nevada yeah. recommended. Uh, I'm in a group in LA, a reggae band in LA called The Lions. And uh, Warren, who, uh, what's Warren's last name? Smith, yeah, Warren Smith recommended the Lions because she had an LA show, and so uh, we got to do a festival date with her, and then a show in LA, and then uh, stayed in touch with Holly and with David, and uh, here we are. Oh, perfect. Well, it's great. Yeah. Well, I won't welcome you all to the U.S. since you live here, but Holly, <laughs> Holly, welcome to the U.S. Yeah, thank you. Welcome to Boston. Cheers. Welcome to Google. It's so great to have you here. Pleasure. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, you do come from a family that's probably more interesting than uh, most of the people in this room. Uh, I don't know if that's true. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you're, if you're not entirely sick of talking about it, um, could you talk a little bit about the um, Yeah, of course. Family? Uh, my family is cool. My mom, <laughs> my mom was a singer early on in her life. And she uh, she grew up with Boy George and uh, was around when he formed Culture Club. So she was a uh, backing vocalist for a little while until it got crazy. And I think she decided that it was not really her her calling to be in a huge pop band. So mm. she she changed direction. Um, but my father has uh, always been a musician, um, still is. Uh, he's a drummer. He's Paul Cook. And he played in the Sex Pistols. Um, <laughs> it's kind of normal. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, if you grew up that way, it yeah, would be, sure. It's, it's my normal. He's very cool. They're both, you know, I owe all of my, my, my musical uh, ability to both my parents. More the singing from my mum, but um, it's, it's been an interesting ride and they've been extremely supportive that's been the coolest part is that they've always totally understood where i was coming from so sure. aside from a few disappointing school dropouts or whatever <laughs> they were just like it's okay you you clearly taking this seriously enough so well that's great yeah. did they encourage you to go into music or was it something you just naturally no, gravitated they just to? um they just saw that it was something that i was leaning towards from a really young age, and they did, um, you know, they 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 got me piano lessons, and I had dance lessons as a kid. Um, but they never pushed it on me. They just they just could see straight away that it was something that I was uh, most likely going to end up doing. So yeah. they encouraged it. Well, that's great. And how did you tend to gravitate toward reggae? Just the way that you do, I suppose. Yeah. I was a teenager and I heard a few records here and there, mm -hmm. and it was just it just had uh, something special about it that that I uh, that I wanted to be a part of in a way. I was in a I was singing in a band called The Slits for a, about five years and uh, they've got a very strong reggae influence in their music so from performing with them I kind of got deeper into the into the reggae vibe and I met a producer called Prince Fatty who I've worked with on both yeah. my records and once I met him it kind of all fell into place and it felt like a very true way for me to express myself musically so mm -hmm. I just stuck with it because it felt good. <laughs> Reggae nicknames are the best nicknames. I wish I had something like Prince Fatty to go by, <laughs> really. But um, I'll have to work on that. <laughs> so for the band, um, have you been playing reggae mostly yourselves, or is that just one of several styles you've worked in? 
We've been playing uh, a lot of different styles. You know, I speak for everybody here in saying that. Um, but reggae, I've been playing with Blake here um, for uh, since we were like 20 years old or something like that. So we've been doing it for a while. And um, you know, when we were first starting out, we were lucky to open up for a lot of uh, big name reggae acts, and certainly got our feet wet in that. And you know, that left a lasting impression on us. And um, so that was a huge influence in how we think about reggae. And in some ways, every other genre of music that we play has a little bit of reggae in it, like naturally, you know? There's certainly like a little bit of unity that you can hear within every uh, style of music. It's like a through line. But um, yeah, reggae is something that's really close to our heart, for sure. Well, excellent. Yeah, the sound is amazing. It really is. I mean, it just, I mean, uh, it's clearly reggae. I mean, there's no mistaking that. But with your vocals, I mean, there's just really nothing like it, in my opinion. Thanks. It's really yeah. completely special. Thank you. <laughs> and speaking of your parents, there may be some people here who've heard of the Sex Pistols. There may be some people who think that, never mind the bollocks, here come the Sex Pistols is one of the greatest albums recorded in the second half of the 20th century. So if you want to pass that on to your dad, that'd be fine. Okay, I will be. There, there may be people who also watch the uh, Karma Chameleon video once a month, whether they need to or not. So <laughs> you could pass that on to your mom. I will. Oh. <laughs> It'll so, make them smile. Okay. Know, very cool. Well, that's I great. Pe people have not forgotten. So your tour just kicked off a couple of nights ago in Brooklyn. You were in Boston last night. Uh, are you doing the East Coast here, and for how long? We've got two more dates in Philadelphia and Washington, D.C., and then we fly over to the West Coast and start in Boulder, Colorado, mm -hmm. and, uh, and drive down through. So we're going to... Seattle, Portland, Oakland, and Los Angeles. Okay. So it's just a, like a, it's a mini tour for now. Being my first time here, sure. It's uh, you know we'll do all the we'll do all the stuff in the middle. Hopefully at some other point if there's <laughs> if there's an well, interest for it coming. So. Yeah, I think the American Midwest needs to hear your music. It's a big place, so I you know yeah. it takes a lot of time to travel around the whole the whole thing. Sure. So, yeah, keep it east and west for now, and then we'll see what happens in the future. Okay. So Twice is still pretty new, your second CD. Are you working on any material for a uh, third CD, or is the tour keeping you too busy? Um, the tour is keeping me busy. I've been touring all summer, but it's always... You know, I, I don't know, I can't tell which part's my favorite, but I do I do love the touring aspect of it, and traveling around is, is kind of one of the most inspiring things, so it helps with the, with the process of writing new material. Um, so there's stuff in the pipeline. I don't have any plans for a third album just yet, like a whole album. I'm, I'm scared of the commitment. <laughs> so I'll probably do some short projects and, and uh, make an album in a couple of years. Or maybe I'll surprise myself and there'll be an album within the next year. Who knows? Okay. Well, we'll <laughs> I like to keep it interesting by having absolutely no plans whatsoever. <laughs> okay. Well, well, we'll prepare to be delighted whichever way you go. By the way, Jonathan, there is a uh, reggae name generator that you can just go. I'm sure with Google being here, you guys know about that. But you go type in Jonathan, and you'll get, you know, <laughs> Ross John or something like that, you know. Excellent. Check I need out, that. Man. Thanks. There are a lot of days where I really need that. You have no idea. So... <laughs> Give, give me the URL, I'll, uh, I'll do it this afternoon. <laughs> oh, a question from that young lady in the audience. Um, do you want to come up here? and Because uh, otherwise we won't be able to hear you. I spent some time in the Midwest, and my favorite reggae bar was the Wild Heron singing Arbadillo Frog Sanctuary in Wrigleyville. Though um, it's closed now, but I think there's probably a pretty good scene there, so I would encourage you to go to Chicago. But I also wonder, where is the reggae scene? Are you going to pop venues, or is there sort of that uh, the subculture of the reggae music in the bar scene? The majority of the the, the strongest parts in the, in the United States of the reggae scene would probably be uh, historically New York at the top of the list, 
just for uh, Jamaican families to come and, and set up shop early on, like in the 50s and 60s and, and whatnot, um, between uh, New York and then over to LA in particular, uh, due to the weather, and then Miami. Um, a guy right here can yeah. tell you about Miami, but those three would be the strongest. And then, uh, interestingly enough, in California, uh, it, it's referred to as West Coast by some people, but California, mainly, there's a California roots reggae scene that uh, we're all coming from and a part of with the different bands, uh, the Lions, the Expanders, the Agrolites. Uh, then there's reggae rock groups like Revolution and uh, Tribal Seeds. And uh, so there's a whole huge, huge scene over on the West Coast. And so now, as it spread from LA up to Seattle and back down, uh, uh, the main gist of LA and or Southern California and Miami is, is certainly the weather of which I will let this guy take over. And then uh, from where Holly's from would be uh, the, the other biggest area in the world outside of Jamaica, just in the UK and Brixton and places like that. Again, historically, really, really famous reggae bands, Steel Poles, Oswad, groups like that come from that area. So uh, for what we're doing here in the States, that, that's the great thing about this tour is we're hitting some of these prime areas. I, I should include Colorado too. You know, I, you guys can maybe figure out why Colorado might like reggae so much. So with that said, uh, you can fill in the Miami void. Um, well, yeah, I was born and raised in Miami, but my family's from Jamaica. Uh, Jamaica used to be under British rule, which is why England has so much reggae music, but reggae is such a revolutionary genre. Um, I mean, I could sit here and name artists off the top of my head for days, but you guys know them because reggae is so revolutionary. It's very international. It's not specific to one city. Um, of course, there's a lot of Jamaican influence, Caribbean influence in Miami because it's so close. Um, everybody originally, like my parents, uh, they moved to, they migrated to New York. So a big influence there. And of course, Denver and California for obvious reasons. But I mean, reggae is everywhere. There's reggae festivals all over the world. And um, eventually we're gonna end up playing all of them. I guess we're all set. I wanted to thank you again for coming to visit us and play with us. There was an incredible set. You guys sounded amazing. Thank no you. surprise. It's an absolute thank pleasure. Thank it's very cool to yeah, be here. Yeah, wonderful so. to have you here. And um, best of luck on the rest of your tour and um, whatever comes next. Thank you so much. And cheers for coming to see us. Okay. Thanks for having thank us. You.